pandemic itself brought a sense of community early on because it was humanity against whatever's going on. The slogan was, we're in this together. Just another night. You can see everybody's cheering for healthcare providers. Such amazing support from the community. I just, I can't even believe it. Then as the racial inequalities began to resurface, because it's always been there, but as it began to resurface, I think it took on a different life only because just a minute ago, we were on this communal kind of a trail where everybody was concerned about each other because of the pandemic. And now for this to happen, it caused other ethnicities to see something that had been there, but maybe it wasn't a part of their everyday life, but it was a part of ours. The first time I saw the George Floyd video, it brought back a slew of memories. First thing came to my mind was my child, my grandchild, you know, because I felt that it could happen to him. That could have been anybody. It just was a black man named George Floyd, but it could have been any man, woman, boy, or girl. Actually seeing this video, hearing this person call for their mother, a grown man. Mama, I love you. I love you. And seeing the spirit in which the officers are acting, Try to put Floyd inside. Stand up. Stop falling down. I'm claustrophobic. Stand up. I'm claustrophobic. Stay on your feet and face the car door. Was really what got to me because I feel like, you know what, you really have no guard for my, you really don't see me as a person. Who are you going to trust to protect you? Although I know, you know, all people of different race die, but give us some dignity. Give us some respect to something out there. I deserve that. My youngest son is 28 years old. And I've been telling him as a kid, the last thing I say to him is, I love you and be careful. And he knows what I'm talking about. And be careful. I don't think other cultures have to do that. I don't think a lot of the white cultures have to say that to their kids. I'm Errol Sky Williams, and I have nothing that will harm, harm you or hurt you. And what's the next place you put your hands when you're driving? Do what they say. Don't get into any arguments. Make sure your hands are out of your pockets so they can see. If it tells you to be quiet, be quiet. Do everything that you can to get back to me. Why are we even having to have this type of talk? Why, why would a police officer assume that you did something bad? Maybe because of my skin color. I never, never thought that would that would be a, a conversation I had to have. But there's so many other kids out there just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it can happen. It can happen. I don't condone violence. But I understand. The violence really speaks to the poor crying out. When you have gone through a level of racism and oppression of things that we've been through, there's only so much that you can take. The violence I'm addressing is how a man could hold a man down yes. with a knee on his neck on. for nine minutes. Yes. That's when Come the violence on. started. Not that I want to see violence, don't get me wrong. That's not, I don't, I don't like violence, I'm against violence, um, but, but I understand it. We need to do something, but we need to be strategic in doing 
what we do. I see a lot of the protests and I, I don't see just black people out there. I see all races out there. And for me, that's a sign of hope. It's more than young people. <laughs> They're tired of it too. The kids, they are future. People don't realize that. Y'all are our future. <laughs> when children imitate what they see, they speak what they hear, and we are their first example. They're gonna model and imitate us. And I think when I talk to people who are much older than me, who are around in the 60s, they all say that we're in a different space now because we have gotten something that they were never able to get, and that's the world to stand up and see. My question is, what are we going to do with this moment, and what are we going to do with this opportunity? God, prayer. Knowing that God is in control in all things, is moving by the power of God, good, bad, indifferent, holy, unholy. With me being a man of faith, a man who believes a commandment that we should love one another, I think that makes me a prisoner of hope because I serve a God who doesn't give up on people. If you are a person who does not have a place to stay, you not only, and if you're a person of color, you not only have to deal with racism, you have to deal with it like just being treated like an outcast from everybody. I was homeless myself when I met Lefsa. When we get our lives together, we want, what we do is, we want to help others now. When we go into city shelters, we go into drop-in centers, we go out in the street ministry, and, 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 and we have these empowerment groups. And we get a scripture, we get a prayer, we write out some critical thinking questions, and we get a reading. It doesn't matter what faith you are, everybody's welcome. What LEFSA does is give them a sense of being a human, being a person, and let them know that somebody does care about you and your life is not over. As long as you're breathing, you got another opportunity to make some changes and get some things right. When I'm in the LEFSA meetings, it was like taking me from earth to glory being translated from heaven to earth in the meeting because it was so enriched with the songs and the praises and the scriptures, the testimonies, the sharing of the hope in Christ Jesus. We know we can't keep what we have unless we give it away. We don't have that. If we give a word of hope, a word of encouragement, give a testimony of what God did for us, we know he'll do for you. When one homeless person gets healed, like myself. Not only did I get well, I, my family got well. Our organization really have a lot to teach our world because we can get together.